Hey there rock stars, Eric Andreas, your Guitar Sage here, and today I'm going to discuss what I believe are the five biggest mistakes when practicing guitar. So I get this question a lot from folks about how to practice, what to practice, whole nine yards. And I believe that these five things I'm going to be talking about today are going to, in a nutshell, really get your, your practice up. It's got several notches. really going to be a game changer if you listen to them and if you watch, if you be the watcher to yourself and understand what it is that you're doing when you sit down to practice the guitar, okay? So the first thing, number one, is no routine. Or even if you have a routine, not understanding the different types of routines that there are that's going to help you a lot. So let's talk about it. What do I mean by no routine? I mean, you just pick up the guitar, maybe you play an old Dylan song, nothing wrong with Dylan, or you just play what, what it is that you know. This is one of the biggest problems with guitar players and they're not advancing is they learn a song. I fall into the trap myself. I'll, I'll, you pick up the guitar, you want to sound good. You go into the things that you know. That's great. You got to practice your repertoire, but you got to be pushing yourself constantly. And if you're not doing that, you're going to remain where you're at. Nobody wants that, right? So if you don't have some sort of routine to push yourself, that's a big problem. Okay, so routine, number one, you've got to have something that you're doing. And let's talk about the different types of practices because this will help you. In my opinion, there's, you know, three or four different types of practice. Um, there's kind of mindless repetition, which there's nothing wrong with that. I do this, I do this all the time. Say if I'm watching TV, maybe I'll be doing, uh, playing my scales, which is why I can sit here and talk and do the scale. Um, and I'll be sitting watching TV, maybe practicing all my modes, all my scales in a different key, that sort of thing. So that's what I call repetition. Very important that you do that because the more time you have on the guitar, the better. It's going to just make your fingers work better. Okay, so there's that. There's the actual calisthenics of moving your, your, your fingers around. Okay, that's what I call repetition. Uh, wood shedding. Wood shedding is when you sit down with a song or a lick or solo or something, anything, and you really have every part of your CPU, every part of your brain really concentrating on a particular something, okay? So that's what we call wood shedding. So if I'm working at a particular lick and I can't get it, maybe I'm working on a sweep arpeggio. And I'm like, gosh, that just seems so complex. I'm sitting there working out, thinking about my picking can and working all that out. Don't be afraid of wood shedding. That's where, that's the difference between mediocre players and absolutely exceptional players is they take the time to really examine as they're playing, okay? And they say, now how can I make that different? How can I be more efficient? Yada, 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 okay? I'll probably do a video on each one of these eventually. Um, so that's what we call wood shedding. Uh, when you're learning music theory, you can have the guitar in your hand. Sometimes you don't need the guitar in your hand. You can just sit there and work stuff out with a, with a pencil and paper. That's a whole nother type of practice. Definitely exceptional. Definitely you gotta do it if you wanna learn music theory. It's helpful to be able to learn it aside from the guitar, to be thinking about it in a different way and then bring it introduce it into the guitar, okay? And last is dress rehearsal, okay? So just like a play, when you do a dress rehearsal, if you make a mistake, you just keep going. So wood shedding, you stop, you examine, and you practice that way. But a wood shedding, or I'm sorry, a dress rehearsal is, let's say you got a gig next week, and you got two or three more times you can practice, you wanna get into dress rehearsal mode, where you're just plowing through the song, whatever you are, However good you are is how good you are. You can't go back and change time. If you didn't woodshed and you kind of suck, you can't blame the process, okay? You've got to either woodshed or, you know, do your woodshedding and then as it comes to dress rehearsal time, do your dress rehearsal. Practice it. If you make a mistake, keep plowing through because you can't stop on stage. Get it? Got it? Good. Okay, so number two, not being passionate. Think about this. If you're in a relationship, Especially in the beginning, it's very passionate, right? If you want to get married, you want to have a long-term relationship, you need to keep that passion going. And so you need to feel that. Sometimes you need to conjure it up. It's not just going to happen automatically like being brand new to a new love or a, or a guitar, okay? You've got to keep that passion going. So there's different ways that you can do that. But obviously, you got to play with passion. If you're just picking up the guitar and you're just like, I'm just not inspired, make yourself inspired. Be passionate about it. You know, you've got to do it. everything that you do. If you're playing your scale. I mean, play it with some passion instead of. 
-hmm. You know, give it something. Give it something, all right? All right, no inspiration. It's kind of hand in hand with this uh, being passionate. Inspiration breeds passion. So if you're inspired, then you're going to be writing more. You're going to be playing more. You're going to be having the fingers on the guitar more. So find some inspirations. Find some guitar players that you love. Find some music that you love. Be inspired. If you're not inspired, you're not going to pick up the guitar. That's just... That's the way it works, okay? You need fuel in your tank to keep the car going. Inspiration is your fuel, so make sure you're inspired by something. Find some new music. If you hear somebody else talking about another guitar player or another artist, listen to them. I do this all the time. Sometimes it's a fail. Sometimes it's not a good artist or not a good guitar player. But more often than not, if it comes recommended to me, I check them out and I'm like, oh, I really like that. I do this with artists all the time, okay? Um, okay, not striving for excellence. Okay, what do, what do I mean by this? When you're playing, now I see this all the time with students, they'll go, they'll play a chord and they'll be like, you know, and they'll, they'll act like they're playing the chord there and I'm hearing buzzing and muting and the whole nine yards and I say, no. What are you trying to do here? If this is the king and you're presenting something to the king, right, you better present a nice clean chord or the president or whoever, somebody important, right? Whoever it is, you want to be, you want to present yourself in a way where you're striving for excellence. If you do this constantly, that that excellence is going to constantly move up. If you're completely happy with mediocrity all the time, you'll never get past that. Never, ever, never, ever will you get past it unless you keep striving for excellence. And why are you playing guitar in the first place, right? You're playing it because it's passionate, it's beautiful, it's inspiring, and you want to excel, okay? You want to be excellent at what you do. So, strive for excellent excellence no matter what you're doing. If you're working on bends, do it with, do it with that passion. Strive for excellence, okay? Uh, last thing I have here is practicing exercises too much and not enough music. This is probably the number one thing. I should have put this at the top of the list. Um, actually, no routine is pretty good too, but practicing uh, too, too many exercises and not enough music, what do you mean by that, Eric? I, isn't that good to practice exercises? Yes, of course it is, but think about this for a moment. No one goes to a concert to see someone play through scales. No matter how fast they play through the scales, I don't care if you're Ingve Malmsteen or Vinnie Moore or whoever, I don't want to see you just run scales, okay? I want to see you be passionate. I want to see something unique. I want to see some music come out of you. It's impressive to see someone play scales quickly, but then it get, you get over it pretty quickly. Then you want to hear melodies, you want to hear harmonies, etc. okay? And not dissing uh, those two guitar players. In fact, uh, Ingve Malmsteen might be my favorite guitar player. He can play scales very fast, but he doesn't just play scales. He plays with passion and he plays unique passages of music, okay? He's not just practicing exercises. There are other guitar players, I won't mention their names, very impressed by their speed, very impressed by their execution, but you can tell they're just playing exer exercises. They're not really playing scales. They're going outside. You're like, I can't really make sense of that musically. And it's impressive, the speed and the execution, but if there's no music there, what are, you, what are you really trying to say? It's like someone who can speak very uh, lofty words, but they end up kind of talking around in a circle. Okay, we don't want to do that. We want to, I'd rather see someone who doesn't have a very big vocabulary speak wisdom. Okay, same thing with playing. Okay, so what happens is people play exercises so much, and then someone says, play something, and they're like, well, I know this exercise. Well, no one wants to hear the exercise. They want to hear songs. So, allow the song, allow the exercises to get you maybe to bump into a new level, if you will, a new level of what it is that you're able to do. But after that, try to get back to the music. If you're practicing arpeggios, like I mentioned earlier, that's completely musical. If I was practicing my dexterity exercise that I always talk about, the one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that one, that's an exercise, and it's great. It's good for beginners because you can concentrate on your fingers and you're not worrying about trying to make it musical. And that's good right in the beginning, but after that, you really wanna start incorporating music in as much as possible, okay? That's it, my friends. Practice, practice, practice the music. Please let me know how I can help. What other things, why don't you tell me what it is that you think 
is another practice routine that folks are getting wrong or what's right. Leave the comments below. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about this because I'm learning every single day. I've been playing for over 30 years and I'm still learning. So I'd like to learn from you. Maybe you have something you can show me. I'm sure you do. So let's talk about it. Uh, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all those fun places to hang out. So hit me up there too. I'm got tons of stuff I'm giving away all the time. Uh, I've got my free videos at yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Maybe check that out. Uh, free ebook at Your Guitar Sage. Tons of stuff. Just hit the links below. Uh, I've got the medicine for what ails you. Hey, I'm Eric Andreas, Your Guitar Sage. As always, be kind to one another. Spay and neuter your animals and don't trust the man. I'll see ya.